Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome back to the Lions Lounge. So Netflix has recently added The Legend of Korra and I'm really excited to talk about it. I feel Korra is a very divisive series being the sequel to Avatar The Last Airbender. And as such, a lot of people compare the two. But I think one thing that is worth noting is that Korra never tried to be Avatar 2. It's just Korra. It's by no means perfect, but despite its flaws, I honestly feel that it's the more earnest and relatable series, and it's my favorite of the two. Even the central theme throughout Korra is that the planet is changing, and that the role of the Avatar is changing with it. This is no longer a world at war to free itself from the control of the Fire Nation. It's been 70 years since it ended. This is a world that's modernizing and moving to a more united society. As such, what part does the Avatar play in all of this? In Korra, we're entering an age where people forge their own paths, and guidance from the Avatar is no longer needed. About halfway through the series, Korra comes to terms with this, and finds her role is no longer to be a bridge between humanity and the spiritual world, instead choosing to aid in restoring the once lost Air Nomad tribe, and assisting the nations to maintain balance. I could spend hours talking about the series as a whole, but for this video I want to focus on Korra and how she contrasts with Aang. As mentioned earlier, Korra is the new Avatar, succeeding Aang, and it becomes apparent even from episode 1 that they are very different. Aang was extremely spiritual, but carefree and upbeat. He was a child forced into a century-long war and tasked with toppling an empire. Korra, however, was raised in an age of peace and given an ample amount of time to train with the best masters in the world. She's strong, outgoing, and extremely confident in her abilities. As such, despite fire being her opposing element, it was one of the first elements she picked up and one of the ones she uses most frequently. If Aang were a wacky kid, Korra's a rambunctious teenager. But it's also this aspect of her that I find the most intriguing in how it's explored. The original series was more about external growth. Aang needed to master all the elements to defeat the Fire Lord and restore balance. At the beginning of The Legend of Korra though, Korra's already learned most of the elements, with air being the only outlier and the most difficult one for her to master. But this I believe was also intentional. Mastery of air requires the exact opposite temperament that Korra has, and the one that necessitates mental growth far more than physical. And this is the main difference between Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. External versus internal development. No season demonstrates this more than the final one, Balance, in which Korra is recovering from physical and more importantly, psychological damage inflicted upon her in the previous season. The primary conflict here isn't even the main antagonist. It's Korra herself striving to overcome the anxiety and depression that's holding her back. Keep in mind this was a show that aired on Nickelodeon aimed for kids. The original series definitely grew with its audience, but Korra is on a whole nother level. And as someone who strives to overcome their own anxiety, it was extremely relatable. If you haven't seen The Legend of Korra, both it and The Last Airbender are on Netflix, and I highly recommend both. And if you watch Korra back when it's airing and you didn't like it, I urge you to give it another shot. Like many great series, this one still resonates with me, and I hope you can find something to love about it too. So now, on to the drinks. I'm going to make two today, one for Aang and one for Korra, mainly to demonstrate the contrast between the two, and I thought it would be fun to come up with some ideas for them. These were probably some of the toughest cocktails I've had to make so far in terms of picking which ones match the character. I could have easily made some four element shots, but one, it's already been done before, and two, I wanted to come up with something a little more creative. Starting with Aang, I wanted a drink to highlight his relaxed and calm personality, something light and mellow. and. Honestly, the easiest drink for this is a whiskey sour. Now there's many different variations you can do for a whiskey sour. You can use rye whiskey, bourbon, you can have an egg white, you can ignore the egg white. Playing around with this formula, I decided to use rye whiskey and I am going to use an egg white and the main reason for this is when you incorporate an egg white into your whiskey sour, it doesn't impart an eggy flavor to it. It makes it creamier. It makes it very light and fluffy which goes with that whole theme of air. So first off, I'm gonna start with a egg white. Now, I recommend if you're gonna make a whiskey sour with an egg white to always crack the egg and use the egg white first because if you screw it up with all the other components, it's, you have to dump everything. So first, one egg white. Next, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. This is a two to one simple syrup. If you are interested, I'll leave the recipe in the description below, but it's pretty simple to make. Next, three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 milliliters of lemon juice. And then lastly, two ounces or 60 milliliters of a rye whiskey. This is 100 proof. 
so it's going to add some more power to the drink. Now whenever you use an egg white, you have to do a dry shake first to emulsify the egg. The easiest method to do this is when you put in your shaker, make sure that both tins are straight down. Like The reason for this is if you have it on an angle like I would normally shake it, and you're not careful, it could crack open and spill the contents not only on you, but if you have someone right in front of you, which is another reason why you should turn on an angle and shake. Next, you wanna add some ice to your tin and give it another shake. Now strain this into a chilled coupe and I'm gonna double strain it just to get some of the ice chunks out. Typically for garnish on a whiskey sour, you would use Angostura bitters, but in this case, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different for Ang. So instead, I'm gonna take a maraschino cherry and I have a little umbrella here just to go on the whole theme of his, like, his glider. And there you have a whiskey sour, or as I will call it, the last sour bender. Cheers. I love a good whiskey sour, it's fantastic. I typically prefer using rye whiskey over bourbon because you already have that lemon juice to add some sweetness and some tartness, and the simple syrup too to add some sweetness as well. So. The rye whiskey really balances that out. It really kind of adds a different dimension to the drink. This last cocktail is for Cora, and for this one, I really wanted to give it some more oomph. Something extra to express Cora's fiery and powerful personality, but also to have some sweetness. So for this one, I'm actually gonna be using some jalapeno pepper. Uh, so I would recommend you be a little careful with this, because you could easily overpower the drink by using too much. I found after many tests, a good balance to be one and a half slices of the pepper. Too much and all you tasted was the heat. Too little and it was almost not there at all. This was a perfect balance. So take your pepper and using a muddler, you're going to muddle that pepper to release some of the oils. Next, you're gonna want one ounce or 30 milliliters of lime juice. Then, two ounces or 60 milliliters of a Blanco tequila. Lastly, one ounce or 30 milliliters of blue curacao. I used this on my previous video, so if you're interested, check it out in the description below. Now add some ice to your shaker and give it a shake. I'm gonna add some ice into a double old fashioned glass and then I'm gonna strain into that. And for garnish, I'm gonna take another one of these umbrellas, a jalapeno, a slice of orange that I'm going to put in like that. And there we represent all four elements. The blue for water and cora, as well as the orange for fire, the pepper for earth, and the fan for air. And I'm going to call this drink the Legend of Coruscant. Cheers. Yeah, this is a very surprising cocktail. So you definitely get those spicy notes of the jalapeno but the citrus definitely balances out the flavor. You have the, the orange from the curacao, the lime juice, and then that tequila, because you're using two ounces, it gives it some more strength to be able to keep up with the rest of the ingredients. It's a really good cocktail. It's not super spicy, but it is powerful. So today we made two drinks in honor of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. The Whiskey Sao Air, and the legend of Coruscant. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. If you have any cocktails you'd like me to make, please let me know in the comments below. I'm Mike and thank you so much for stopping by the Lion's Lounge. I hope to see you next time.